before and after. Pretty drastic, right? <laughs> I like it. So today we're gonna to be talking about how to edit photos to match a brand's aesthetic style. If you didn't see the last video, what we did was I went to Galveston, used natural light, used my surroundings, used nature, all sorts of stuff uh, to just basically use what you have and shoot some really cool photos. So today, what we're gonna do is edit those photos to where they match the brand's aesthetic and to where they would work well on Instagram or websites or basically whatever platform you're trying to use them on. I'm here to help you guys, so if you have any questions about this process or how I'm doing anything, just leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you guys. So one of the first things I like to do with editing is I like to go through and try any presets that I already have and see if maybe that matches, maybe it doesn't. A lot of times presets don't really work with photos, so there's some tricks I'm gonna show you in here on how to make them a little bit more customized to where like the colors will match better and the style is just gonna look a lot more consistent. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do in Lightroom is adjust your exposure and your color temperature and just make sure it looks natural and that you can see the details you want before you start messing with anything else. I usually shoot things a little bit underexposed just to keep all the details. So what I like to do is go up a little bit. It's a little warm. There we go. Here's the brand that made this product. This is kind of the look we're gonna be going for. So a lot of like super dark blacks, a lot of grain, kind of warm tones, a lot of textures. Yeah, there's the hot sauce. Nice. A lot of rust. So when I was doing the photo shoot, basically I went through Galveston and found textures and locations that kind of matched this vibe. And I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, and basically I've logged the whole thing. So if you are interested in that, definitely go check out the, the first video of this series. All right, so I have, I have some presets that I like to use. So I'm gonna go in and see, do they work with these or does it look horrible? And see kind of like a good starting point for the photos. Okay, so I really like these, these Mastin Labs film presets as a good starting point. But basically, yeah, like that. All right, so. One click. This one looks really, really good, honestly. I like it a lot. We got lucky with this one. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in and change it to where it matches that style. So I'm gonna darken the blacks on here. You can open up your HSL slider, which is hue, saturation, and luminance. I'm gonna take out some of the blue in the rocks, make those darker. Okay, I'm gonna bring up the red for the hot sauce a little bit. Not too much. I want to keep that detail. It's always good to just slide it around and see how does it affect the image? Is it good or bad? Okay, so I'm really liking this. That's all that presets do basically is they go in and they change all these things for you. So it just transforms all the colors, transforms what colors are certain brightness and saturation and gives it this filmic look. So we're just going in and customizing that. We can add even more grain. So let's just go ahead and slide that up. Boom. It's looking good. You could go in there and do all this manually, but presets just help you speed it up a lot. So that's why I like to use them. All right, this one's gonna be a super interesting one because we're gonna change the blue completely. And I, I knew I could do this going into it. So that's why we use this blue, super interesting. So I'm gonna go in and use the same filter which this by itself looks great, but compare it to their styling and it's just too much. So basically what we're gonna do is go to our HSL and it's almost like using a green screen and changing the color because the blue is so strong, but you just slide it, boom, all the way down like that. They use a lot more teal blue on their Instagram feed. So what you do is you go into your hue tab and you can just change this basically to whatever color you want so they use a blue that's a lot more like this you keep desaturating it and make it a little darker 
to make the whole picture a little darker. Just starting to make it look a lot more like grungy and desaturated kind of vibe. It's always good to know what you can do in editing while you're shooting because, yeah, you wouldn't expect a photo to come out like this just seeing the spot we shot this, but I knew I could do it. It's cool. All right, cool. So before and after. Pretty drastic, right? <laughs> I like it. A lot more black. Super moody, looking good. That before and after is just crazy. So when you don't have total control over your locations, sometimes you have to deal with stuff like this. This one has this like reflector thing because we were just shooting on this random rusty trailer I found. And I'm gonna show you guys real quick how to remove that. So we're gonna go Command E, which is going to bump this file over into Photoshop. So basically all we're gonna do is click our lasso tool draw the shape around this thing and click fill so I did right click and then click fill and content aware fill okay and magic it's gone super easy sometimes it doesn't work and you can use the this tool the clone stamp and you can just like copy other parts of the texture over that works great or for more complicated shapes. But I kind of shot this strategically to where it'd be in an easy spot to do this. So always shoot to edit. Saves you time. All right, this was one of my favorite ones. It was literally just hot sauce on the side of the road in between some rusty stuff. But it looks sweet with that 100 millimeter macro, love it. So before, just looks, you know, it's cool. After. And all I did was I copied this preset from the first one over to this one and cropped it for Instagram. So I like this one because re it really, really just emphasizes that Skull and Crossbones logo. Love it. Super quick, super easy. All right, so this one, this one doesn't really match the brand styling. I mean, they might would use this just because they do a lot of like adventure stuff, but really it's kind of too bright for their brand. But I'm going to show you guys why I like this one is mostly because it'd be really good for like a landing page with text over it. So what we're going to do is I went ahead and used my filter and I'm going to crush the highlights big time and I'm going to do this. So it's, it's kind of HDR ish. Not really. Um, so what this does is you don't have anything that's like actually white in the picture. So whenever you put white text over it, it's gonna be really easy to read and it's just gonna be nice and clean and simple. And that's what looks good on my website is simple stuff. Easy to know there's the product, there's the environment that works with the product, kind of the vibe they go for and text can just go over it like right in the middle. All right, last one is the shot with the gumbo. This food was so, so good. It was totally worth it to go out of my way, get this food, bring it all the way back to Houston and use it just for this video, because it was awesome. All right, see, this is why I like these filters. This is just their everyday pack, Mastin Labs, and you've got great black and white starting point, great Kodak Gold and Kodak um, Ektar. I just really like this one, but, it's a little bit too busy for, for their style. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make it a little bit desaturated. So turn down the vibrance, turn down the saturation a little bit. Add some contrast. The plate has a little bit of a tint to it. So I'm gonna try to work with my tones. Actually, you can use this little dropper. So you just click on it and then drag it. Let's see what happens. So. That's kind of cool, it simplifies it a little bit. I'll turn down the blue. Keep a little green in there. Having it a little bit less colorful just simplifies the image a little bit. So before and after right there, I like that. It's always good to have images that incorporate like a person interacting with the product or like their hand or like someone in the background or you know something like that because for marketing purposes, then that person that's viewing it is going to imagine themselves enjoying the product or 
they're gonna be like, oh, that could be me. That could be me. If we're not doing that, what are we doing? You could totally just export these just like this, send them to your client. They would love it. It'd be great. The end. But if you want to stand out as a photographer, it's always good to go the extra mile just a little bit. So I'm going to show you guys a few tricks that I do in Photoshop to make these images really pop even more. This is some stuff that I do to literally like every single photo that I send to clients. I like to go in and use my dodge and burn tools. So basically dodging is lifting and brightening certain spots in the picture to add emphasis. And then burning is basically like think of like you're burning something, it turns darker. So you are brightening some spots and darkening some spots. And I like to use this strategically to draw emphasis to the product or the person or whatever the picture is. So let's see, dodge tool. Okay. And then literally all I'm going to do is I'm just going to pull out a little bit more detail where I want it. So I've got the label with all the detail on it. I'm going to pull that up a little bit and then I pull up this water from the crack. I'm going to pull up a little bit more of this texture from this sea stuff. Okay. That's pretty much it for the, for the dodge. So just a little bit. I like to use a big one for the burn tool. So I'm going to add a little bit more vignette to it. Okay. Cause their Instagram is just super moody. So I'm going to try to get it a little bit more like that. The trick with burning is it always helps a lot if you burn where there's already shadows. So it just makes things look real 3d and pop. So there we go. Nice. So I like to use this to make kind of directional patterns where it brings your eye to the product. So I'm going to add a little bit of a shaping to that little crack, a little bit right there, a little bit right there, right there. And I'm going to bring down this whole left side a little bit. See so yeah, how that it just makes it look a little bit more 3D. Okay. Yeah. It's a little too bright in the middle. I'll dodge it again. We're building depth in the photo. Basically, you can go back and forth, like dodge a little bit, burn a little bit, dodge a little bit, burn a little bit until you get to where you want. See? I like it. Once you're done, I'm going to go in here and click flatten image and then command S save and that's it. So this one's done. So once I'm done editing, I like to go back and make sure did we match the brand style? Did we match the mood? Do we match their aesthetics? Did we add something interesting that might not already be on their feed? Did we add something that their customers can imagine themselves using the product for? And I think we did, but let's check and see what do you guys think? Okay. So this one, first one, like I said, it was mostly just an example. Doesn't totally match. If it was like stormy at the beach or something that could match like this photo, but it was not this one. Definitely a winner. I think that one would look just totally sick just on their Instagram as is easy this one with the rust definitely one of my favorites it's just super clean super focused love it 100 millimeter killed it okay this one yeah see we match the blues on this one pretty well man yeah, I love this picture that was such a cool find You've got foreground, you've got tons of texture, you've got lines leading to the product. It's simple, stands out, perfect. I think this gumbo one would work. It's pretty simple. If I had had like different colored plates and stuff, that might have worked better, but I think it was good. I think it turned out really good, especially for not using any money or anything. We literally just found these locations and made it work. If this inspired you guys to get out there and do anything similar, 
let me know. I'm super curious what you guys are working on. If you get out there with any products or anything that you already have or work with things that you already have, I'd love to love to see what you guys are working on. Definitely just leave it in the comments, send me a link. I'll check out the photos. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I really hope you learned a lot from this. If you liked the video, make sure to hit the like button, comment your thoughts and what you guys are up to, and make sure you subscribe and turn on your notifications so you can know when we're dropping new videos and what I'm up to. So until then, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.